Pots and containers form such an essential part of our garden element. And what it adds, it adds that bling. It adds that focus, that drama, a little bit of character, sometimes a bit too much. But it, what it also does, it gives us balance. Um, and one of the best uses of containers that I see in gardens used from South Africa to Porfader to the United Kingdom is when pots are used on either side to welcome you into an area. Whether they're welcoming you into a new section of the garden, to the front of your home, to the sides of beautiful entrance gates, they just seem to work. And that is probably the most commonly used form. But, where's the but? Where does it start going wrong? Always consider your scale. If you've got a double story home, you need to put a fairly large size pot next to it, like here, on a base up to my shoulder. You can't go putting a little Alibaba pot like this, which believe it or not, I have seen that then you've just got scales of wall in front of you. So always remember scale and proportion. And a tip that I always tell people when they're on their way to go and buy pots is take a tape measure. Silly as it might sound, but very often you get to the place of where you're going to be purchasing your desired pots and you think it's going to work by the time you've loaded in the boot, got it home, unpacked it, dragged it to its spot, it doesn't work. So get your proportions correct, which is really important. Pots as well can offer us so much else by grouping them together to create some character or just an accent, balancing on either side of a bench, but it doesn't need to be formal. That gives you such a beautiful array of height, texture, and just some interest within a spot of the garden. The one great thing about pots and containers is that no matter how big or small your garden is, there's a place for them. Whether it's three little terracotta pots that have your favorite succulent in it, or three beautiful geraniums, there is some way that you can put a pot. And there's always some way that you can put another one. And that's the beauty. So to try and keep it as neutral as possible and not so glaring on the eye that your eye's jumping all over, we've used the similar plants. So in this case we've used the agaves and we've used some of my more special succulents sitting in the foreground. But you'll notice the one thing that the pot, there are only two different finishes in these pots in this entire collection of about 15 pots. They are the terracotta or they concrete. So we haven't mixed anything more than that. As soon as we put another texture in here, whether it be a fiber cement pot or it's finished with a different coloring or a different texture, as soon as we start throwing that in here, ooh boy, licorice all sort, and your eye's just not gonna be settled. So always keep that in the back of your mind when choosing and selecting how you're gonna be grouping your pots in and around your home. And of course, pots are only limited by your imagination. Whether you're planting in a hypertufa pot that you've made yourself, whether it's an old galvanized bucket that you found, whether it's an old boot or a shoe or even a coffee haste tin that you are recycling, it's up to you guys. The sky is the limit. There are so many things that you can use. And in fact, that's where a lot of the fun comes in.